we should be worry about how the karmic is affecting us means past karma is affecting us or is uh, is this practice sufficient enough to take care of that like is it uh, necessary to worry about such things like how the karma is uh, playing out in your life yes all all it really you have to do is be aware of right now of what your the feeling uh, it's the reality of now. You don't need to know why. It's just like this. So, so you know, when we start asking why, then we try to analyze, and and uh, we get caught up in in the, in our own thinking mind again, where when we. And when we just recognize this awareness, then you just recognize it's like this, then you're aware of a, the impermanence of what you're feeling. And that's a direct knowing, you know. But as soon as you try to figure out why you feel like this, then it goes back into the self view. Super, what I found a little frustrating of in Buddhism is you know, for being an arahant, you know, the commentary, you, know, you need to practice, uh, or you, it's uh, one uncountable, about 400,000 uh, eons, and for Pachika Buddha, you know, double of this, it is so incredibly long, you know, when you, it's, uh, you know, you know, on the <laughs> eon is already so long, and then you say, 400, and one uncountable, only for being an arahant, you know, you, you say, maybe, you know, this is uh, very frustrating, dude. This is extreme, uh, unbelievable, long time. Yeah, the religions tend to use hyperbole in their exaggeration. Because actually, the, the Buddhist teaches about here and now. And, and like, like when, you know, if you, like the ten fetters, that, you know, as you, let go of these ten fetters and that's our ship. There's twelve, you know, formally the formal is the uh, four noble truths, three aspects to each truth, twelve insights, our ship. So, I mean... But, but you need to parliament for it. <laughs> yeah, but then, you see, that's something you create. You know, you read it in a book and you, you think, of how many... Do I only have a million lifetimes more before... <laughs> 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 and when I was saying the Tibetan tradition is the problem that I was saying that I need three counters you, you should be aiming for three counters even in the future to attain Samus and Buddhahood and then the teacher but, um, you know you can attain Arhan for one lifetime <laughs> that sounds good <laughs> <laughs> yeah because it's I mean it, that's the way language works you know well, time and well when I come here now I'm hearing like you know again the countless eons being made <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and time is a is another empty condition, you know. It's the creation. So, like, like time is uh, it's akalika dhamma, akaliko uh, is timeless. Well, what is that? You know, because we're these are, your body's about time. It's born. It's this age. It gets old, and dies, or. Uh, sensory experience is always about beginning and ending, and 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 then we live, and our reality is time. We have clocks and calendars and diaries, and 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 then it, you know, ancient time, modern time, and past history and the future. You know, we 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 always look to the future where for you know success and fulfillment, or no fear that we'll fail. You know, you, when you die, you would you go to hell or to heaven or to be reborn in some low state, or will you? Is there just nothing? Is there just oblivion? You know, when you're dead, you're dead. That finished. Don't worry about it. You don't know. You're not dead yet. You're still breathing in human form. <laughs> no matter what anybody tells you about. Are you being reincarnated, or you go to heaven or hell, or there's nothing. You just oblivion. 
the reality of this moment for all of us is we don't know because we haven't died physically died so then they um, well then you observe death not from because you have to wait till your body dies but you can observe the cessation of conditions in your mind it's the same thing death physical death is just cessation the end of the form you know in other words it's, you know it's no longer a conscious form just decaying conditions and so uh, so then you know you don't have to wait for that you can you can have the insight you're just observing your own thoughts or emotions because the uh, arising ceasing applies to that's the pattern of all conditioned phenomena you know it's not a matter of just physical and if you begin to like Lung Po Cha used, used to say die before you die you know so this is uh, is uh, you know you do you, you observe death before your physical body dies and that's like Niroda the cessation of condition you you have insight you observe the death of or the end of a of, of a arrow or a thought or a feeling and as you kind of make note of it you know then fear of death falls away because you just you know it's, it's what ways and cars operate but you're you're observing that not you're not dying with each you know you, you don't go into oblivion every time a thought <coughs> passes through your mind you still there's still consciousness that has a you know a continuity that allows birth and death to take place or beginning and ending and so your 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 refuge is in this consciousness rather than in the the uh, particular condition that arises and ceases. See, then we call it amatatamma, or the deathless reality. <coughs> and that's where the, this is where the, you know, like when we think of anatta, or no self, we, you know, people find that difficult because you know, we we seem to be a separate self. You know, and so you know, the one thing we know is that I'm this person here, and I feel this way, and I'm separate from you. But if you if you re, to to re- recognize a not time non self, you let go of thinking and attachment to memories and. And views about yourself you're not annihilating them you're just releasing your your blind holding what's left when when there's no self is is a conscious awareness and it it's not a self for you know the, if, if I say uh, that's mine then I'm creating a self into it so you don't create anything, and you just recognize it and 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 uh, appreciate it because it is a a matadama. It's it's uh, you know the deathless rather than just an empty state and, uh, of nothingness, or you know you don't become unconscious and and uh, fall asleep you, there's an alert awareness that sustains itself we don't create it it's not, not with what we create it's what happens when we stop creating what we recognize so like in, in the ten feathers and the four stages like Arahant would be total letting go of of the feathers no longer deluded in any way or attached to them so it would be pure conscious awareness in an individual form but it wouldn't be a person you know it's not a person anymore it's reality but then we can say so and so is an arahat then we create 
then we, we form a sense of somebody has become one because that's how language works you know it, language is, it has that limitation you know, it's all about you know creating forms so <clears throat> I think in Vasudhi Bhagavad one of those it says there's the path but nobody there's nobody on the path <coughs> And I used to think, that's kind of depressing. You know, there's this problem, nobody can go in on it. <laughs> suffering is, but there's no suffering. The path is, but no one walks the path. And, uh, and, you know, I realized that the path, there's no, nobody, there's no person on it anymore. There's, there is this, which is reality. But you're not creating anybody to... To, to be walking on this path <laughs> and this is where, where your thinking mind stops notice there your thinking mind can only go so far and then you have to let it go because <clears throat> thinking is, is a creation you know so we you know we create languages and they convey you know they're useful but they're also created for living in the world and, and, and about discrimination and, and quality, quantity. It's about this is bigger than that, or quality, this is better than that, or, you know, it's blue or red, or it's form, uh, or, you know, it's shape and form. Is uh, is the conditioned realm, and we create that. And language is how we we bind ourselves to forms as our real world. And so, like in Paticca Samuppada, you know, you you dependent origination. You it's a, an exploration of that that process from Avicca, Bajaya Sankara, Sankara Bajaya Vinyana. It's a, as long as there's ignorance of Dhamma, then that influences how we interpret everything. And it always ends up with dukkha. Sokha parite va tukha toma na upaya. You know, you start out with the vicha, and the result is dukkha. Things are like a vicha is not understanding Dhamma, not knowing reality. And then it gives that whole structure, you know, how from consciousness, namarupa, salayatana, pasta, vedana, danha, upatana, and so forth. And you, and you can kind of explore that in your mind. Like, like, uh, Ajahn is always talking about upatan, attachment, out of ignorance. Danha, upatan. And so like you, You've got the <coughs> desire and attachment to desire, and that you can, you know, that's a good place to start. Just change your attitude towards desire to, you know, because sometimes with the English language we tend to, to desire has a kind of pejorative meaning. You know, say like somebody has a lot of desires, you're not complimenting them. <laughs> <laughs> you know the, the greedy people but this is a desire realm and and desire is like this it has desire to, for sense pleasure desire for becoming something you know you're not content with where you are you desire to become rich or powerful or enlightened or be, desire to become an arahant Bhavadanha, Vipodanha, desire to get rid of things, you know. You want to get rid of your anger, get rid of your doubts or worries and, and emotional states. You don't like them, you want to get rid of them. It's a desire. And it can be very righteous, you know, get, get rid of greed. Seems, you know, that's going the right way. We shouldn't be greedy. Uh, we should be content with our requisites, whatever they might be, and then we feel guilty because we're not, 
we sh- we want to get rid of greed so we can be content. And you never succeed at that. <laughs> but it's through through observing, like dana, because desire can't see desire, but awareness can see can know desires like this. Kama dana, power dana, wimpo dana. He can actually, you know, it's very clearly stated in the second noble truth. He, you know, I found that those three categories very helpful because like Vipavadanta or desire to get rid of things was was my big problem. I was a control freak. I was always trying to control things and get rid of bad mental states or you know get rid of suffering get rid of greed, hatred, delusion it was you know, wanting to become perfect, power done. I wanted to become free from these these forces by annihilating them. And of course, you can't do it on that way because I didn't understand that desire, and uh, and and then I didn't I didn't understand upadana or attachment to desire. So I spent two years just contemplating Paticca Samupada in my mind. And, uh, <clears throat> and I found it very helpful, you know, and, and, and because these teachings are really help, skillful means to explore consciousness. Like the Four Noble Truths, Paticca Samupada. <clears throat> and then <clears throat> the ten fetters, the four stages, you know, like you, you've got the first three fetters are like Sakiditi, Silapatabara, Masvichikisha, and they're all created by human beings. They're not, you know, they're, 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 they're creations of, that we create a self, we create a world, we create a a society we create and we create a language so we're these are all you know common to we have different languages or whatever but the whole point is that these are creations by human beings after they're born where your body is natural you know it's a tamacha it's it's like you know it's, it's just it is what it is human body and consciousness and this is a sense realm, so you're going to feel Vedana. But, but then we create this, because we have memory and language, and we have desires, and we don't understand ourselves, so we create the world in our mind. And then, like in the teacher Samapada, if you explore that, then it, it, you know, it, it gives you ways of investigating, get a kind of different perspectives on the same thing but you're always looking here it's not not like intellectual but it's intuitive what is upatana and what is letting go because the insight into the signal to let go of this grasping and then uh, letting go floy one is like is it annihilating desire? You know, getting rid of it? Or, or is it just like this, you know? Let go of this thought. I don't have to throw it away. I can just set it down. I'm no longer clinging to that cloth. <laughs> because it's useful, you know, I get hold it when I need it and, but I'm not clinging out of ignorance you know and so like like letting go is like learning to just let things be what they are in, in your mind you know you're not trying to annihilate them but you're letting them be and then, then they teach you about impermanence and uh, show you the path of the way to Neroda or the cessation of, uh, of uh, maybe anger or lust or doubt or worry 
or your cultural conditioning. You know, you learn how to recognize it, and you're letting go. You're not trying to destroy it, but you're no longer just blindly holding on to things like you were. And then, uh, then the neurota side of it uh, is where you know the when you are mindful, then the whole thing, the whole thing collapses. So you have Sankara, Nirondo, and so forth. And and so then the, the, it's not about annihilating, it's the, the cessation of, of the world we create. And then that leads to peace and wisdom. So there's like this, this awakenness you know, wake up kind of teaching. It's just, it's not, you know, it's just learning how to to reflect and observe your own attachments. It's not about trying to become someone who's not attached to anything, but testing it out, experimenting. Like, it's all about getting the only soul, you know, that kind of going deep and observing and something, you know, it's not just it's not just an intellectual understanding. It's profound. And it, then you have insight knowledge rather than just a lot of knowledge about Buddhism. Yes, I think... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anything I say before reflection, you know, I'm not trying to I'm just trying to encourage you to trust yourself more to 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 be this knowing, observing, other than you know, spending your monastic life always trying to get things or get rid of things. Which is easy to do, you know. You try to get rid of your calaces and try to become an arahant and, and you know people that try to do that never succeed and they become disillusioned with it but, and so it's like like encouraging you to like just wake up and uh, puto and then this kind of empowering you to use these forms these teachings to, for wisdom rather than just accumulating more knowledge about Buddhism it's, it's they're actually aids, helpful directions and they're very skillful so I don't see any anything else that could compare you know, the, the practical clarity of the Buddhist teaching and then it gives you vocabulary gives you uh, it gives you a way of living your life uh, and uh, that is blameless you know, if you live rightly in the monastic world, it's, it's a blameless way to live. And you, but you're not rejecting society; you're enhancing it, like the sangha in time enhances Thailand. It's not like, uh, even though you know, people say you know, there's corrupt monks, but there's bound to be. You know, individuals are corruptible, but the teaching here is pure. It does, it's uh not not a corrupt teaching in any way. And what you're doing is up to you, really. <laughs> yeah, I can't force you to practice. <laughs> like like tyr- tyrannize you. <laughs> you <go. laughs> You inspire us. <laughs> <laughs>